Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Time Machine. I'm Harper, and today I'm painting the cover to my new sketchbook for 2021. Yes, it's that time again. Out with the old, in with the new. And I gotta tell you, friends, I'm happy to say goodbye to 2020. Because in a nutshell, it sucked. Starting a new sketchbook always feels like a fresh start or a new beginning. And that's nice, isn't it? I like to make up titles for my sketchbooks because they represent different eras of my life, and the title reflects what I'm feeling at the time, and hopefully some of the art and writing inside. I think titling your sketchbooks is important, because words and names have power. It's a cold and rainy January morning here in the desert, and frankly, I'd like to go back to bed. I've got a fresh cup of coffee and Calexico on the stereo. I'm trying to wake up. Wake up for the new day and for the new year. It's usually a bit of a bummer to take down the Christmas tree on New Year's Day, or whichever holiday traditions you enjoy, but it's also a cathartic transition to the new year, a symbolic change of season, a changing of the guard. And speaking of changes, on the first day of this year, I started with a big one. I unceremoniously detonated all of my social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Deleted, not deactivated. They're gone. <laughs> I dumped that shit like it was 1976. I'll probably miss my Facebook groups for John D. McDonald, Men's Action Magazines, and Johnny Carson a little, but I surely won't miss the compare and despair, time suck, distraction, asshole, political comment part. Oh, I'm sure I'll go back to Facebook and Instagram in a little while. F Twitter. But I needed a break. A do-over. Usually by now, the third week of January, I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll with some big new goals and from now on and starting on Monday I'm going to do this and this and that. But so far, I'm not really feeling it this year. I'm still waiting for that New Year's burst of energy. So in the meantime, let's talk a little about last year, and then I'll outline a few ideas I've got for 2021. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the facts. Checking my YouTube statistics for last year, I published 34 videos. Hey, not bad. Added 396 new subscribers. I had 19,000 views, which translated into 1,221 hours of watch time. Hmm, not exactly setting the world on fire, but compared to the previous year, it's a hell of a lot better. Oh, also in January, I experienced my first mini viral video. My how to find your art style video got 2,500 views and 85 subscribers in only 24 hours. Hey, that's pretty awesome. Hopefully this year I can score a few more of those. So last year, even though there was massive civil unrest, unprecedented political divisiveness, and a worldwide pandemic, I still made some drawings I liked, some pretty good videos, and a few stink bombs, and overall, I feel like I was able to make some progress. Well, here we are, getting ready for another trip around the sun. It's time to strip away the old and rebuild the new. So let's talk a little about some ideas, plans, and schemes for the coming year. Oh, and I'm going to drop one bombshell at the end of this section, so stay tuned. Let's start with the most important thing for 2021, Patreon. This year, I'm making my Patreon page the project that I spend the most time on. I really want to make it worth it for my patrons by giving them VIP exclusive access to stuff not seen anywhere else. What kind of stuff? Glad you asked. 
Stuff like illustrations and art, behind the scenes material and process videos, art tutorials, comics, sketchbook journal posts and essays, discounts on prints and original art, and early access to all public material. Yep, I'm really going to boost up the value this year, so maybe you should head on over and sign up. No pressure. Go do it now. I'll wait. Next, let's talk about an important statistic here on YouTube, subscriber count. I currently have 620 subscribers. My goal for 2021 is to finally break 1,000. It's a tall order, but I think I can do it. And my final plan for this year is to make more finished pieces of art. The past year and a half or so, I've been doing a lot of work in my sketchbook. And while that's super fun and everything, I want to create more work outside of the sketchbook. I'd like to have more finished pieces to sell, both originals and prints. And remember, if you're a patron, you get the chance to buy everything before the public even sees it. Oh, whoop de doo All right, now for that mini bombshell reveal that I teased earlier. And here it is. I'm going to change the name of my YouTube channel. Oh my goodness! Could somebody help her? I think she fainted. Anyway, I'm changing the name of my channel to move away from the sketchbook niche and make it more about art in general. Because like I said, I want to do more finished pieces of art this year, and I need a new name to reflect that. Spoilers, the new title of my channel is probably just going to be my name. Womp womp. But above all else, let's remember, none of this is written in stone and is subject to change. Because let's face it, I might wake up tomorrow with some new crazy bullshit, I don't even know. Hey, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's do a quick rundown of how I made this year's sketchbook cover image. Kind of boring, I know, but there might be a couple of cool tips and tricks that can help you with your work. First of all, I made a quick thumbnail drawing of the design before I started, but I accidentally threw it in the garbage, so use your imagination. That's what it's there for. Next, I used a white colored pencil to block in a rough drawing. I knew I was gonna cover it with gesso, so I was just trying to get the size and shape of the silhouettes nailed down. Since I'm working on a black background, I brushed a layer of white gesso over the image area so I would have a base to start laying down the colors. I wanted the gesso layer to have some variation and texture, so before it was too dry, I dipped a sock puppet in some water and scrubbed some of it off here and there. Yes, it was only here and there, not everywhere, just here and there, not there. No, sir, right over there. No, you're in the wrong, back up right there. Anyway, then I made a tighter drawing with a regular old number two pencil to use as a road map. Most of these pencil lines will be covered in paint. Starting a painting on a stark white background isn't my preferred method, so I laid down my favorite base coat, a mixture of sap green and burnt umber. Thanks, Bob Ross. Covering the entire image of a painting with a thin layer of the same neutral color helps your painting appear more unified and harmonious. Or some art school bullshit like that, I don't know. Next, I started building up the base colors using acrylic paint thinned out with water. Generally speaking, when using acrylics, you start with the darkest tones and then work your way toward the lighter ones. With watercolors, it's the opposite light to dark. I tried using my palette knife to get some variation in the mark making. Even though it's one of my favorite tools, it really wasn't working for this image. Although it was perfect for making the stitching on this dude's groovy looking ring zipper denim jacket. Then I drew the title lettering with a pigment liner and filled it with colored pencils. It's a mixed media extravaganza. Actually, I was just being lazy because painting each letter would have taken forever and I've got stuff to do later. After adding a few more finishing details, boom, 
There it is, friends. The 2021 sketchbook cover is done and done. All I got to do now is fill it up with tons of drawings, paintings, wild ideas, plans and schemes, journal entries, and of course, fart jokes. Now, before we wrap it up today, here's my Jerry Springer final thought about sketchbook journals. This personal record of ideas, events, and art is a great exercise in better understanding myself and others, and it's still the most accurate and complete record of my life. (laughs) For whatever that's worth, who knows? But I strongly suggest that you keep a sketchbook journal, because it'll really help improve your art, and it will be an invaluable sounding board and voice of reason during the darkest of times. And that, my friends, is no bullshit. For even more hot sketchbook action, cool stories about art and life, and dad jokes, check out these rad videos right here. And if you thought this video was better than running out of coffee, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon so you'll never miss another sketchbook video right here on the Time Machine. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.